Good morning, good morning, everybody. Palm Sunday, y'all ready to praise Jesus this morning? Come on, can we clap together? The stories of you sell way too good to be true. The things that you do never make sense what they do. Oh, you're so writing my story. Oh, you're so writing my song. I have no reason to worry because you may That's a good word, that's a good God, He made a way, hallelujah. It's the good news, it's the gospel, amazing grace, hallelujah. Make it Jesus, you've got nothing to prove. Oh, I've seen the mountains you end. Keep breaking through And you're making everything new Oh, you're restoring my spirit Oh, you're restoring my soul You have removed every limit And nothing is missing at all That's a good word, that's a good God Spirit, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives through worship, what you're doing in our lives through this church. We just focus our attention, we focus our heart on magnifying and exalting your name. We worship you, Jesus.
and feet as violence meets the Prince of Peace beyond the King. Out of the world, Lamb was slain. In a rose, mighty to save. The fullness of God won't be kept in a grave. Darkness your hour is over. Behold the love is dying clean. Behold the Yes. 
sing Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. and generations falling down to worship to sing a song of ages to the Lord. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing a song of ages to the Lord. Your name is the highest. Your name
Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We praise you. Welcome to church on this Palm Sunday. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the day on this Sunday that Jesus rode the colt of the donkey into Jerusalem in his triumphal entry with his admirers and his worshipers lifting and waving palm branches, the symbol of victory, the symbol of celebration, and uh, Jesus to the shouts of his people singing and saying, Hosanna, to the and, and blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is actually a fulfillment of a couple of Old Testament prophecies, one in Zechariah and then one from the Psalms. The psalmist wrote these words in Psalm 118. Listen to what he prophesied. He said, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now. The prophet went on to say, Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, send now prosperity. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. This is intriguing to me that the Old Testament prophet said that when Jesus would come into Jerusalem in triumph, beginning his holy week on his way to the cross, that the people would shout, Now salvation comes. Now prosperity or the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. It begins right now because Jesus has entered the holy city to give his life for the salvation and the abundant life of his believers. Since that day 2,100 years ago, the church cries and prays those prayers. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, save now, Lord. Send now your prosperity, your abundant life, your God kind of life into our lives that we may live, Lord God, in your forgiveness and in your blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And everybody shouted, amen. Come on, let's sing it again. Come on, one more time. Lift up his name. Let's shout. Give him some praise. Happy, happy Palm Sunday, everyone. Yeah, this is a day of celebration, praise, and victory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, if you're here for the very first time, welcome to Abundant Church. We want to celebrate you. We want, we've got a gift for you. If you're here for the very first time, put your hand way up in the air. Keep it up long enough for our ushers to find you. They're going to have you a little, uh, hand you a little gift bag. Everybody give them a welcome. Bienvenidos. Welcome to church, everybody. We're so glad that you're here. On the inside of this gift bag, you'll find lots of good information about our vision and our dream for you. You can scan the QR code that's in it, and, and that would give us the opportunity to pray for you and to serve you in any way that we possibly, possibly can. Now, if there are uh, middle school students, high school students, if you're here, your crowd is right over here to your left with the flags. We invite you to follow them to our prime youth service, a great youth service geared just for your age, and you can go and be with them right now. Praise the Lord. Well, if you would, greet one another and you may be seated. Thank you so much for being here. Tell somebody how good they look today on Palm Sunday. It'll be a blessing to them. 
Yeah. This is a big week for us. We go into Holy Week with prayer meetings on Monday and Tuesday night, 6.30. Our regular Wednesday night service on Wednesday night, 6.30. Pop-ups all over the city will be gathering, you know, uh, resembling the Last Supper Jesus had with his 12. We're having suppers together, dinners together around town, different places, celebrating, fellowshipping. And uh, all of those locations are on the app, and you can find one near you. They're all over the city. We'd love for you to take part in that. Then our Good Friday service, both east and west, 630 Friday night. A great power pack service ready for you. We encourage you to, to attend any and all of those that you possibly can. Let's gather together. Let's pray, and let's worship our Lord Jesus during this holy week. Amen? Uh, Merch, I'm wearing my merch shirt, my Jesus Saved shirt. We got lots of different stuff out there just introduced today, so be sure and go by and see the, the abundant clothing we have for you. How many men we got here this morning? Men, 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 men. Come on, men, don't you like a good car show? We're going to have Abundant Men Auto Show April the 13th. It's free, everything's free. And if you've got a car or a truck or a motorcycle you'd like to show off, yeah, we want it there. We'd love for you to register that. It's free registration, but we're going to have a great time April the 13th with the guys and see lots of cool cars, and uh, we want you to be a, a part of that. How many of you know Easter coming up next Sunday? Easter's next Sunday. Yeah. 85% of the people that accept Jesus or go to church were the, are there because of a personal invitation. Let's all invite people for next Sunday, for Easter Sunday. Ushers have invitation cards. We'd love to give you some of those right now. Lift your hand. We can pass out those invitation cards. And uh, you can make a part, that part of your invitation, make it easier for people to get here. Let's win some souls together. Can I have an amen? Amen. Yeah. If you would, look to the screens, and we'll talk about Easter a little bit more. Thank you so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Reality is not just what we see in front of us, but the eternity before us. Because of one sacrifice, we are clothed in the love of God and recipients of his saving grace forever. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. Joy, peace, and hope of an eternity with him. The one who gave it all, so that we may have life and have it abundantly. He is the same yesterday, today, forever. Easter at Abundant, Sunday, March 31st. Special sunrise service at 7.15 a.m. 7.15 a.m., 9 a.m., 10.45 a.m., 12.30 p.m. For more information, visit Abundant.org slash Easter. We are Abundant. All right. Well, the countdown is on to Easter. I really want to encourage you, don't miss next Sunday, but don't miss what's happening all week long. David talked to you about it. I really encourage you to be a part of it. Get here as much as you possibly can. I hope you notice Easter Sunday, we've got an extra service at our East and West Campus at 7.15 a.m. I invite you to, uh, you know, check out those times, make sure you're at one, and make sure you invite new people to come to church. Also, on Good Friday, we will be having special services at our east and west campuses one of my favorite services all year long good friday communion a time of prayer we've got prayer class we're going to be handing out plus we'll be doing special baptisms and we've even got a special kids baptism going on so if you want to sign your kids up or yourself up you can do that on our church app really the app is full of all kinds of good information it'll get you up to date on everything that is happening here at abundant church all right i've got a question for you today how many of you are a part of the giving family here at abundant church let me see your hands incredible hey thank you for what 
what you do, you are making a difference in people's lives every single day. I've got another question for you today. How many of you want to give God a shout of thanksgiving because of what he has done through your giving? Amen. <laughs> awesome. At Abundant, we give cheerfully, amen? We never give out of guilt, and we never give out of manipulation, and we never give wondering what God's response will be to our giving. We give because we're grateful to God for everything he's done in our lives, amen? I said we give because we're grateful to God for everything he's done in our lives, amen? Men, we also give because we believe in the promises in God's word. And in God's word, Jesus paints a very clear picture. He teaches us that one of the ways that our life can grow and get better is through our giving. In Luke, Jesus explained it like this. He said, when you give, then I'll give back to you. But he doesn't give us back just what we gave. He gives back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In other words, when you give, your life grows and gets better. Amen. Now, I, for one, can testify that my life has grown and gotten better. Anybody else? I said anybody else. I said anybody else. Amen. And I believe that one of the many reasons that that happens is because I faithfully give right here at Abundant Church by sowing my seed into good ground. And God honors that promise in my life. When I give, he produces resources. When I give, he produces harvest. When I give, he produces answered prayers in my tomorrow. So I want to encourage you. I know many of you are going to give today. Give today cheerfully and give today believing in that promise and knowing that your God is faithful over his word. Amen. When you give, your life is going to grow and get better. Amen. You know, the incredible thing about giving at Abundant Church is this. When you give, not only does your life grow, but other lives are made better as well. That's the power of what we do as a community. Again, thank you to our Abundant Giving family for making things happen for people every single day. All right? I know you're ready to give. They put up on the screen behind me all the different ways that you can give. You can give online. You can give on the church app. You can give using text to give. You can give here in person. There's envelopes in the vomitory. There's a place in the lobby. You can put that after service. Also, if you're joining us online today. Hey, thank you so much for connecting with Abundant Church. I want to take a moment and invite you to come and visit us in person. You know, online is super convenient, but there is nothing like being right here in God's house. And I would love for you to come and get connected to the other people at Abundant Church. You can give today also. Uh, we would love for you to be a part of this if our church is speaking into your life. All right, let's pray over our giving today. Father, I thank you for everything that is being sown at Abundant Church on this Sunday morning. I thank you, Father, that you are faithful over your word. When we give, you use our giving to grow our lives and to make other lives better as well. Now, Father, I ask you to multiply everything that is given today so that more and more people can come to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Men. All right, you can stand with me, and as you do, I've got one last quick announcement. Sunday after Easter, we will be having Vision Sunday right here at Abundant Church. I really encourage you to make plans to be there as well. This is going to be a great day as we talk about what God is doing here at Abundant. All right, let's worship. No enemy can hold you down, because there's nobody in the grave now. One hand gets to wear that crown Cause there's nobody in the grave now No enemy can hold you
Let's pray today. Father, we lift up our nation. Thank you for the opportunity to live here to call this place our home. Now we just believe that we abide in the shadow of the Almighty, that no evil shall befall us, neither shall any plague come nigh our dwelling. We pray for every man and woman that wears a uniform, Lord, surround them, protect them, keep them safe from harm. We lift up our leaders, Lord, help them, guide them. May your wisdom be revealed to them. Now, Father, we just believe that even as we stand in your house today, that you, Lord, are moving in our earth, that you are dealing with evil and that your peace and your goodness rule and reign in Jesus' name. Now lift your hands towards heaven. Father, speak to us today. Speak to us, Lord. Oh, by your word and through your spirit, Lord, I ask that you give every person here and those that are watching online eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. Father, your word tells us that when we learn the truth, the truth sets us free. Father, it is my prayer that as I teach the truth of your word, that freedom would be found, that faith would be built, and that hope would be renewed. Father, it is my prayer that the power of your word would do the very thing that you intend for it to do. May every heart that hears this word be made better. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, you can say hello quickly one more time to the people around you, and then you may be seated. All right, if you have the church app, you can get it out. My notes are on there. You can follow along with me. We've got a lot of scripture to cover today. And really, I just want to pause for a moment. You know, Pastor David referenced it, but today is an incredible day. It's Palm Sunday, and we're walking towards the greatest celebration that we have as believers, Easter Sunday. And I don't know about you, but today I am so grateful for the gift of my Savior, Jesus. I'm going to give you another chance. I think you guys are still like windblown. I said, today I am so grateful for the gift of my Savior, Jesus. Amen. That's more like it. <laughs> so every year as we move towards Resurrection Sunday, we do a series of teachings called The Cross Equals Love where we highlight certain results and benefits and life-changing realities that are ours through the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know this verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. My friend, hear my heart today. No matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter what has been done to you, God loves you. He loves you. In fact, he loves you so much that he gave his son Jesus to die for you. And this is not some story that we read and we like to tell our children, my friend. This is the great gift of the sacrifice of your Savior. And God gave his son Jesus twice for two reasons. Why? Number one, he gave Jesus so that we could believe in him and we could be saved. Amen? The great gift of salvation. Romans 10 verse 9 says that if you would confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. Romans 10 verse 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So God sent his son to die for you so that you could believe in him and be saved. But number two. He sent his son Jesus also so that you could have eternal or everlasting life. Now, sadly, most believers do not know 
or they understand very little of what eternity means to them. They think of eternity in terms of going to heaven, and it does mean that, but there really is so much more to it. You see, eternal life for you as a child of God does not begin when you get to heaven. Eternal life begins the moment that you ask Jesus to be a part of your life. Now, let me pause here for a moment. We're in an unusual season in our church. We've had a lot of new people coming to Abundant. So let me just say this to you. Abundant Church is not about religion. Abundant Church is about relationship with Jesus. At this church, we believe that God loved you so much that he sent Jesus to die for you so that you could have relationship with him. And the moment that you arrive in your life at a place where you say, Jesus, I want to know you. Jesus, I want a relationship with you. Jesus, would you be a part of my life? Then you begin to live this thing we're talking about, eternal or everlasting life. Now, we've been painting a picture here at church over the last several weeks of gaining a broader understanding of what eternity means to us right here and right now. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 says, God has set eternity into every man's heart. My friend, God has called you to live this eternal life. And that's why we often find ourselves in seasons where we're searching for a grander meaning. We're searching for a life with more meaning. And that life is found in this relationship with Jesus. Last week, we began looking at Matthew chapter 6. We're going to take a moment to go to these verses. Verse 19, it says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but instead lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Do not live your life consumed with what you're building here on earth. Why? Because what you're building here on earth is temporary. Can I get an amen? Instead, lift your, lift your eyes and focus them on your eternity in heaven and live in a way to where you are focused on building up treasures in heaven. See, most Christians miss this. They don't realize that their eternal lives are directly affected by their, by their lives here on earth. So how do we build treasures in heaven? Well, last week we began talking about th this. We build up treasures in heaven through our good works. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 14, for God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So what did we look at last week? We talked about the reality that our works here on earth will be judged. Now, let me pause here for a moment. It is not a judgment for condemnation. Why? Because you are not saved through your works. You are saved through your faith. Come on. I said you're not saved through your works. You are saved through your faith. Again, if you have ever had a moment where you said, Jesus, I want to know you. Jesus, I want you to be a part of my life. If you have ever arrived at that place, then your eternity in heaven is secured. However, the way we live on earth does affect our reality in heaven. We're saved through our faith, but God treats this judgment of work seriously. You see, it is not a meaningless formality. It is significant because things of eternal significance are brought to the light. And things of eternal consequences are put into place. Again, the judgment is of the works, not your salvation. Are we all on the same page? The judgment is of our works. So what are we really talking about here? We're really talking about just living right. People get all freaked out with this kind of stuff, but let's just simplify it this morning. 
What we're really talking about is living the right way, doing the right things, not just claiming to be a Christian, but living as a Christian. Amen. Living as a Christian. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, for we are God's workmanship and we were created in Christ Jesus. Why? For good works. You were created to do good things. You were created to live like you know Jesus. To do good works. So we were created in Christ to do good works in our lives, with our lives, and through our lives. And we will be rewarded for our good works or... We looked at this last week in 1 Corinthians 3. We will suffer the loss of not doing the good works. So we're either living in a way that will stand the test of time and will prove to be beneficial when we get to heaven, or we're living in a way where we're, our works will cause us to suffer the loss of the reward when we get to heaven. Can I just pause here for a moment? Look, I'm going to help you today, and maybe this will simplify this whole concept we're talking about. I have personally decided that when I meet Jesus, I want him to look at me and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Anybody else? I do not want to meet Jesus and have him look at me and say, hey, girl, you know what? So, like, you were okay. (laughs) But can we talk about a few things? Because remember that time that I opened this opportunity for you and you got in your car and drove home? Do you remember that time when so-and-so texts you and you thought to yourself, I'm too busy to help them? Do you remember that time that I put this gifting in you and you allowed fear to stop you from manifesting the gifting that I had put in you? Do you? No, 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 no. See, that is not for me. Come on. We're talking about Jesus. I have decided that when I meet Jesus face to face, I want him to look at me and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on. And how does that happen? Well, I was created by God for good works. Let me help you some more. Did you know that God would never ask you to do something that you don't have the ability to do? You know, when I was growing up, my mom was very strict with me. And she expected me to not just make A's, but to make high A's. And one day I came home and I had gotten like a 90 on a quiz. Look, I know my mom was extreme, so don't judge my mom. She's in heaven. She doesn't care what you think about her anymore. So here we go. And she got very upset with me. And I remember looking at her and I said, Mom, I said, this is absolutely ridiculous. I got a 90. I said, this is not a big deal. I got a 90. And you know what she looked at me and she said? She said, you know what? A 90 is, not, is pretty good for somebody else, but I know what you're capable of. She said, I expect you to make these grades because I know what kind of student you are capable of being. The Bible said that you are God's workmanship and he created you to do good works. In other words, God expects you to make A's. Amen. And he holds us to this level of accountability. Why? Because he knows you can. He knows it's in you. So if we're created to do these things, then we should do them. Can we all agree on that today? Why? So that we can get our reward or our treasures in eternity. So truly, it can be said that obeying God is not only right, but it is also smart. And it will pay off not only in this life, but also in heaven. Amen. (laughs) 
obeying God. Again, living right, doing right, deciding to live the way God wants you to live. My friend, I have been serving God for a long time, and one of the things that drives me absolutely crazy is this narrative that is in the earth today about Christianity, and it describes a relationship with Jesus as being a hard life, a sad life, a not fun life, a life of no's and don'ts and can'ts and won'ts and shouldn'ts. My friend, life with Jesus is not a life of no's and don'ts and can'ts and shouldn'ts. Life with God is a life of saving. I have arrived at a place where I recognize that God knows more than I know. And I've decided to live the way God wants me to live. And let me help you today. When you get to that place, you will discover that in fact, life with God is a life of yes and can and would and should. It's a life of open doors. It's a life of opportunity. In fact, if you will arrive at that place, you will discover that life with God is a life of peace. It's a life of joy. It's a life of hope. It's a life of victory. It's a life of relationship. It's a life of knowing that you're never alone. It's a life where you arrive at a moment where you go, you know what? I don't understand what I see. In fact, nothing in this world makes sense to me, but that's okay because I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. And in this world, I am not alone. Jesus is with me. In fact, Jesus is alive on the inside of me and greater is he that is in me. Life with God is not a life of no. It's a life where you say God knows more than I know and God's ways are better. Amen. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7. Jesus is speaking. Verse 25, the rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. We don't have time for the whole chapter. Verse 26, Jesus says, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, he will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So what does Jesus say? He's saying not obeying God is not only wrong, it's foolish. It's foolish. In other words, he's saying don't just be a hearer of the word, be a doer. Be a doer. Anybody a parent? Okay, then you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. If my sweet little eight-year-old messes something up because he didn't realize what was going to happen, guess what? He's got all kinds of grace coming from his mommy. You know why? Because he's cute. <laughs> and I love him. And you know what? He gives me really good hugs. But if my sweet little eight-year-old is standing in front of me and I say, hey, buddy, I need you to go over here. And you're going to do step one, step two, and step three. And sweet little eight-year-old decides to skip step one, step two, or step three, or all three steps and go and do whatever he wants. And then we have a problem. Guess what? Sweet little eight-year-old is not going to be so sweet anymore. Why? Because he was told what to do, and he decided not to do it. If he doesn't know what to do, because I didn't tell him, then that's on me. But Jesus says, I gave you my word as a pathway of how to live. He said, not only did I give you my word, but you were created in the image and likeness of God for this purpose to do good things. If you were created to do it, you have the ability to do it. And now I've told you what to do and you still decide not to do it. Well, then you're just done. Jesus 
Don't be a fool. Come on. Don't be a fool. You know what? I was thinking about this actually in between services. I think we're going to have a lot of Christians that are going to get to heaven. Pastor David will probably agree with me. They're going to stand before Jesus, and Jesus is going to say, hey, you know what? Like, you're going to heaven, but, I mean, what were you doing? You went to Abundant Church every week. What were you doing? And they're going to stand there like this. What do you mean? What was I doing? And they're going to go, Jesus is going to go, hey, remember that Sunday? Palm Sunday to be exact. That girl, Pastor Shannon, she was there. She said, don't be dumb. Come on. Don't just be a hearer. Be a doer. Be a doer. Be a doer. Amen. Be a doer. Now, works is not a dirty word. Some of you are uncomfortable. You're like, I thought I came to this church because we're saved by grace. You are saved by grace. But works is not a dirty word. My friend, we should be inspired by our good God who has done good things that we serve and who blesses us and helps us to do more good. My friend, my God has been so good to me. I said, my God has been so good to me. I said, my, I'm going to give you another chance. I said, my God has been so good to me. <laughs> my friend, my life is not perfect. I have walked through some hard seasons. I have dealt with things that do not make sense. But you know what? My God has been so good to me. Me. Well, you know, Shannon, you don't know what my life is like. I don't know, but you know what? You're alive. You're breathing. You're at church. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and let me help you some more. Some of you have never left the great state of Texas. Let me encourage your heart today. You came to church today without a care, without a concern, without a worry. You walked in here. You raise your hands. You declare the name of Jesus. You got a Bible that you can take anywhere. I don't care what anybody says. Being in America is better than being in a whole lot of other places, my friend. You get to worship with both without fear or concern. Tonight, I'm going to take my children home. I'm going to tuck them in bed. I'm going to pray over them. I'm going to confess the word with them. Tomorrow morning, we're going to get up, and guess what? We're going to choose from more than one kind of thing for breakfast. I said, my God has been so good to me. Amen. And his goodness should move us to do good, to live good, to be good, to show goodness. Amen. We should be motivated to be good in every area of our lives because God will reward us or not. According to our good works. Let's look at the Bible here. Hebrews 6 verse 10. For God is not unjust. To forget your work and your labor of love. Which you have shown towards his name. James 2 verse 17. Faith without works is dead. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. What does the world need? It needs Christians who don't just talk Jesus, but live Jesus. Come on. What do your children need? They need parents who don't just talk Jesus, but live Jesus. What does El Paso need? It needs a church who rises up and says, we don't just talk Jesus, we live Jesus. 
Amen. Psalm 62, verse 11, for you render to each one according to his work. So let me ask you one more time. Anybody besides me decided that when you get to heaven, Jesus is going to look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. So then the question is, what does God reward? I'm going to give you a couple of points before we go. Number one, God rewards good works. Good works. Ephesians 6 verse 8, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord. So the Lord rewards your good works. I'm going to give you some great advice today. You want forgiveness? Give forgiveness. You want encouragement? Give encouragement. You want help? Help. You want love? Give love. Live your good works. Number two, what does God reward? He rewards denying yourself. Denying ourselves. All right, here we go. This makes people uncomfortable. You mean I'm not going to be able to go to Starbucks every day, Shannon? God does not care how much coffee you drink. What is he talking about? He's talking about arriving at the place in your life where you decide that you are no longer the number one priority but instead, he is the priority of your life. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, seek first the kingdom of God. Not second, not third, not after you've paid all the other bills, not after you've done everything else. No, it said, seek first. First, the kingdom of God. But watch this. God rewards you. What's the rest of the verse? And all of these things, what things? The abundant life and every good thing God has for you will be added unto you. Unto you. Denying yourself. Mark's Matthew 16 said, let him deny himself and take up the cross of Jesus. Number three, what does God reward? Showing compassion to those in need. Showing compassion to those in need. My friend, no judgment here. But if you have reached a place in your life where you are not moved by hurting people, then you need to spend some time on your knees. If you have reached a place in your life where hurt gets a response of judgment from you, then you need to pray. The Bible says that Jesus was moved by compassion. Moved by compassion. And let me tell you something. Jesus has shown up for me in the darkest moments of my life. Jesus has met me in hospital rooms. Jesus has met me with tears running down my face. Jesus has met me when things did not make sense. Jesus has shown up, and my friend, he has shown up when I did not deserve it. And I thank God for his compassion towards me. And you and I should be moved with compassion towards others. How do we do that? Luke 14, when you give a feast, when you invite the poor and the maimed, you will be blessed or rewarded. So what does God reward? He rewards us helping hurting people. That's what's so great about Abundant Church. We're helping hurting people every single day. Why? Because the Bible tells us to. 
What does God reward? Number four, treating your enemies kindly. Kindly. This is a tough one for people because you've been hurt by people. And when the Bible tells us to treat our enemies kindly, it doesn't mean we got to be best friends with them. But what it does mean is we don't get to be like them. It means we don't get to act like an enemy also. We don't need to tell on social media everything that was done to us. Come on. We don't need to get even. We don't need to destroy. We don't need to tear down. What do we need to do for these people? We need to pray for them. And sometimes you got to pray by faith. Come on. I mean, I've been there. Father, literally, in obedience to you, I am praying for that person. Come on. <laughs> Help them so I don't have to. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Luke 6 verse 35 says, love your enemies and do Good. Number five, sacrificial and generous giving. What does God reward? He rewards our giving. Our giving. Matthew 19, verse 21, sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Let me encourage you today. A lot of you give, but you don't give generously. Do you know not one time in my life have I ever regretted being generous? Not once. Not once. Many times in my life have I regretted not being generous enough. <laughs> I have never been upset when someone exceeded my expectation. Anybody else? What is she talking about? Well, let me help you. Sometimes we pay for the appetizer when we should have paid for the whole meal. Sometimes we hear about a problem, and instead of taking care of the problem, we do some little tiny thing. Guess what? Give, and God will give back to you. Be generous, and you're going to get generous, generosity back. The Message Bible says generosity begets generosity. Amen. We're almost done. Number six, what does God reward? Those who suffer difficulties but keep on trusting him. Hebrews 10, let's go to verse 35. Do not, verse 35, do not cast away or throw away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Do not throw away your confidence. Instead, keep on trusting him. Keep on trusting him. Keep on believing in him. Come on, I'm speaking to someone's heart today. No matter how hard it is, keep on trusting. No matter how difficult it is, keep on going. No matter how big the attack is, keep on holding on. No matter how hard it may seem, keep on believing. Keep on hoping. Keep on trusting, my friend. You've got everything to gain and nothing to lose with Jesus. Everything to gain. Number seven. What does God reward those who live faithfully? You know this verse at Abundant Church. When we're faithful over little, God makes us rulers over much. Rulers over much. Number eight. What does God reward those who stand strong when persecuted? This is a tough one for people. Why? Because we don't like people not liking us. We want to be everyone's favorite. We got parents that can't even handle their kids being upset now. I mean, seriously. Seriously. 
I was doing a counseling session the other day, and I thought, oof, lucky you that you came to see Shannon. <laughs> Pastor Charles would have been like, what is wrong with you? What do you mean you're upset because your teenager got mad at you? You pay for the house, you pay for the cars, you pay for the food. We live in a culture that is desperate for approval. Oh, if I post that on Instagram, they're not going to like it. What? My friend, we don't work for the accolades of people here on earth. We work for Jesus and Jesus only. And let me help you. Abundant Church is well liked now in El Paso, but I grew up when people had a lot to say about us. I went places with my mom and dad where people pointed their fingers and whispered. I was with them when people came up and called them out. And let me tell you something. If the world has their way, you will shut up, you will sit down, and you will be quiet. But thank God Charles and Rochelle didn't shut up, sit down, and get quiet. <laughs> My friend, you're going to have to arrive at a place where you have settled in your heart. Come on. I am not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I don't care if it's popular or not popular. I don't care if you want to be my best friend or not. I'm going to live my life for Jesus and Jesus only. And it may not make sense here, but one day, I said one day, I said one one day, I'm going to stand before my Savior, and he's going to say, hey, girl, well done, good and faithful servant. Come right in and enjoy your rewards. Amen? What does God reward? He rewards those who make wise and fruitful use of the resources and opportunities God gives them. We've already talked about this. Doing the best you can with what you have. Rising to the occasion. Amen. Being bold Christians. Living the best we can. Number 10. Last but not least, what does God reward? He rewards those who lead others to Jesus. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 19. For what is our hope? or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you being in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and our joy. What is it saying? What is the great reward of life? That one day you get to heaven and you're surrounded by people that are there because you led them there. Okay. Okay. Notice how quiet the clap got right there. Why? Because you just went, oh, no. <laughs> That's just too much, Shannon. <laughs> I'm very uncomfortable with that. I understand. But guess what? You know what you can do to lead people to Jesus? You can bring them here on Easter. Pretty simple. You can send a text, you can make a phone call, you can take one of those cards, you could leave it at Starbucks. You could invite people 
to come on Easter Sunday. I'm telling you right now, I've got a list of 20 people I'm inviting to church next Sunday. And you know what? I'm going to be preaching next Sunday. But if one of them can't get here, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get up a whole 15 minutes early, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to pick them up, and I'm going to bring them to church. Is that convenient? No, it's not. Is it really what I want to do? Probably not because it's Easter, and I want to go have brunch with my family after. Is it worth it? 100% because one day I'm going to stand in heaven and that person that I brought to church is going to be there in heaven with me and Jesus is going to say you know what Shannon you made a difference and watch this it's not going to just be that person it's going to be the person that that person knows because with every person comes a generation and a family and a legacy and friendships and community and connections for every text message you send you have no idea the change chain of things that you are setting into motion, no matter who you are, you can change someone's life. Yeah. Truly. By just saying, hey, would you go to Abundant Church with me next Easter? Hey, hey, would you come to church with me? I'll tell you this, if you get them here, we'll get them to Jesus. We'll get them to Jesus. And my friend, if you would deny yourself for just a moment and be honest, someone got you here. Someone got you here. Someone walked up to my mom and invited her to a Campus Crusades for Christ meeting on the, at UTEP. A complete and utter stranger said, hey, would you come to this with me tonight? That person had no idea, think about it for a moment, that that night at that meeting, my mom would say yes to Jesus, and then my dad would say yes to Jesus, and then they would say yes to a calling and a vision on their life to give birth to Abundant Church. And because one person invited her to that meeting, Thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people are serving Jesus and will spend an eternity in heaven because one person said, hey, there's a meeting over here. Would you go with me? One person. You can be that person. Amen. I hope you learned some things today. Would you stand with me? Come on, we're going to pray. Please don't leave. We're right on time. Father, I thank you for your word. Lift your hands towards heaven. I thank you that it challenges us and it speaks to us, Lord. Father, we are a people at Abundant Church who will not grow weary of doing good. We've got a faith to believe that there is a harvest and a reward in eternity for us. And we are committed to living our lives. as real shining lights for Jesus in every way. Father, I'm asking you to do something supernatural through the people that are here today. May next Sunday be one of the greatest harvests Abundant Church has ever seen. Bring the people in from the highways and the byways, from the north and the south and the east and the west. And bring them here using the people that are here today. In Jesus' name. Now quickly before you go, if you're here and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I talked a lot about this today. God loves you so much, he sent his son to die for you. And when he died, he paid the price for all of your sin and shame. He paid the price for every bad thing you've ever done will do and every bad thing that has ever happened to you. Why? Because he loves you. And all he wants is to be a part of your life. The world and religion tell us that to know God is complicated, but that's a lie. The Bible says you can know Jesus by simply saying, Jesus, I want to know you. And the moment you make that statement, he will become a part of your life. And my friend, your life will never be the same. You see, when you say yes to Jesus, you spend an eternity in heaven, but also... He becomes a part of your life right here, right now. And I can confidently tell you that life with Jesus is way better than life without him. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody leaving, nobody looking. Here we go. 
If you're here or at home and you would say, Shannon, I want to know Jesus. Shannon, I want a relationship with Jesus. Shannon, I need Jesus. Maybe you would say, Shannon, I feel like you're talking to me. I'm definitely talking to you. Maybe you would put it like this. You know what, Shannon? All I know is I need to make a change. I've got to get right with God. If that is you, it would be my honor to pray with you right where you're at. I want to know Jesus. I need Jesus. I've got to get right with God today. I've got to make a change. If that is you right where you're at, just slip your hand up so that I can pray with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Over here to my right. Thank you. Thank you. Up in the risers. Let me see your hands. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. I see your hand. Over here to my left. Thank you. Thank you. I want to know Jesus. I need Jesus. Shannon, I want a relationship with Jesus. Thank you. Shannon, I'm going to get right with God today. I've got to make a change. If that is you, quickly put your hand up right there. I see your hand. Maybe you're here at home and at one time you walked with God, but you've drifted away. If that is you, come back to Jesus. Don't let another day go by with distance between you and God. If you need to get right with God again, quickly put your hand up. Shannon, I'm coming back to Jesus. I'm going to live different. I'm going to be different. I'm going to get right with God again. If that is you, quickly put your hand up. If you're at home, just slip your hand up. God sees your hand. That's all that matters. I'm going to give you about five more seconds. I want to know Jesus. I'm going to say yes to a relationship with Jesus. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to get right with God. If that is you, slip your hand up. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right. There's hands up all over. If you raise your hand at any point, please repeat this prayer with me. Church family, let's join them as they pray. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of all of my sins, thank you for loving me and thank you for your grace. From this day on, I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give them a hand? Hey, if you prayed that prayer, please stop by our Welcome Center. We want to give you a a book. It's our free gift to you. Most importantly, please come back to church. Guys, All week we'll see you here, Holy Week, Easter Sunday. God bless you. We love you.